Hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Juan. And um, thank you, Bailey, Rebecca, and Dania for your research and for connecting to the toolkit. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen and get started. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, as Juan mentioned, uh, my name is Melina, and I provide HLP support for um, IOM, CCCM, and shelter teams. And today I'll be presenting the Housing, Land, and Property Rights Toolkit for CCCM practitioners. Um, let me just make my screen a little bit more. There we go. Um, <clears throat> So I'll first be going over the background of the toolkit, its intended aim and audience, um, the methodology for putting it together, the toolkit's contents and structure. I'll be providing an overview of kind of the types of resources and tools that are provided under the thematic areas. I'll be providing um, a preview of the toolkit and kind of how it could be used in practice. And then I'll be discussing status and next steps. So uh, the background of the toolkit is that it was developed in response to priorities that were identified by CCCM and HLP practitioners to strengthen HLP responses in different types of camp settings. Um, it was put together in collaboration with the CCCM cluster and the HLP AOR working groups, where together we identified areas where CCCM practitioners are most engaging with HLP and tenure security issues, HLP tools that are relevant for CCCM practitioners, and any gaps in available resources, um, guidance, and tools for addressing these issues. The aim of the toolkit is uh, to provide guidance on addressing HLP and tenure security issues for most phases, if not all phases, of uh, CCCM programming from project planning, such as due diligence, to implementation and closure or transition, um, and for any situations that may arise along the way, such as um, responding to evictions and resolving disputes. The intended audience of the toolkit are um, CCCM practitioners who aren't necessarily HLP experts and need guidance that is um, relevant to them, useful, and easy to navigate. Um, so the methodology of the toolkit, it was informed uh, by a review of input from past CCCM practitioners days, um, HLP AOR working group meetings, there was an analysis of existing resources that are out there from CCCM shelter um, and any HLP resources, and then consultations with the CCCM cluster, CCM practitioners, um, HLP experts, and as well as the um, HLP AOR working group. So the toolkit is centered around eight thematic areas, and these include due diligence, community representation and participation, women's inclusion, conflict management and mediation, camp closure and transition, urban displacement, eviction response and resettlement, and inclusion of persons with disabilities. and the contents and structure of the toolkit. So um, within the thematic areas, there is an overview of each topic, an explanation of how the topic that, or the theme relates to CCCM and HLP, and then there's a set of relevant resources and tools. The resources are longer documents, reports, guidance notes, um, any case studies that are available. And then the tools are really intended to be usable items. So question sets, checklists, mapping exercises, um, templates of any sort that could be kind of adapted to the context in which the practitioner is working. And then for each resource and tool, there is a context and a summary provided. Um, so the context indicates the intended audience for the resource or tool, the physical or geographical context, and any other information that could help the reader quickly identify if the resource or tool is relevant to them or the context that they're working. Um, and then the summaries identify exactly where in the resource or tool the useful information is that is relevant for CCCM and also highlights any key messages. So rather than summarizing the, the entire content of the resource or tool, the summaries really aim to help the reader navigate the document and quickly find the information they're looking for. So it's intended to be more of um, a roadmap. And then there's a section of further reading um, that doesn't have the provided context and summaries, but are relevant to the thematic area and can provide um, additional information. 
So just to explain kind of the, the focus of the resources and tools um, under each thematic area, I'll provide a brief overview. So due diligence is primarily concerned with guidance on verifying land ownership, conducting tenure assessments, understanding rights, roles, and responsibilities. Um, something that came up a lot in our consultations with practitioners was that a big barrier to engaging with HLP issues was kind of understanding the roles of CCM practitioners, HLP experts, legal experts, and when and how to engage. So the guidance here tries to focus on that. Um, women's inclusion, so gender responsive HLP um, or tenure assessments, strategies for mitigating uh, the risk of gender-based violence, understanding barriers to women's HLP rights and how to overcome them, as well as inclusion of women um, in HLP and CCM programming. Community representation and participation. So this really focuses on HLP rights, awareness and capacity building, um, any exercises or examples of participatory mapping and enumeration and stakeholder identification and mapping as it relates to HLP and CCCM. And then under conflict management and mediation, there's information about engaging with land markets, um, tools for land and conflict prevention and alternative conflict management and mediation. Under camp closure and transition, there's information for um, natural resource management and remediation, transferring use rights, um, HLP and tenure security during collective center closure transition. Urban displacement um, focuses on resolving HLP issues for urban outside of camp um, CCCM service delivery, any in interventions for land access in cities, and kind of navigating informal community tenure arrangements. Under eviction response and resettlement, there are, um, there's a focus on tools for eviction risk mapping, um, prevention and intervention, as well as CCCM eviction response strategies. And then for disability inclusion, there's guidance for recognized methods for data collection for persons with disabilities, identifying what the barriers are uh, for persons with disabilities and accessing services and tenure security and kind of the relationship between the two and then HLP and tenure security um, protections and protocols. So I will now provide um, kind of a preview of how, how the toolkit could be used in practice. So bear with me as I go to the PDF version of the toolkit. So this is the PDF version, um, it will soon be published on the CCCM Clubs cluster website where there's a more um, interactive web-based version, but this version is available as well. Um, so as you can see, there's um, an introduction and a toolkit overview, and this kind of provides um, the background structure methodology kind of information I just went over. And then um, an overview of housing, land, and property rights as it relates to CCCM. Um, and then you can see the thematic areas. So the ones that I described, these eight thematic areas with an overview for each, of how the thematic area relates to HLP and CCCM, a set of resources and a set of tools, and then a section for further reading. So um, an example could be in the context of conflict management and mediation, if this is what you're searching for guidance for, you could see what resources and tools are here and um, what might, might be most relevant to you. So perhaps it's land tenure, alternative conflict management. You could click directly on it. You will be taken to a brief context and summary. So from the context, you could see um, the intended audience. So it's useful for CCCM practitioners operating in areas with multiple types of tenure arrangements um, where there are disputes and where there's a need for mediation techniques. So if that sounds uh, relevant, you could dive deeper into the resource through the summary and kind of find where there might be useful information. As you can see, it's footnoted. And each footnote um, shows exactly where in the resources information is. So for example, <clears throat> a useful diagram that's illustrating the multiple types, um, multiple layers and dimensions of land tenure conflicts um, is provided that could be useful for CCCM practitioners. If this is what you're looking for, you can go to the footnote, uh, which is footnote three. And that tells you that that exact diagram is uh, found on page 17. And then if you scroll down, you can click on the link and it'll take you directly to that tool and you know exactly where you need to go now instead of searching through the whole tool. 
Another example um, could be if you were more interested in just tools, um, maybe there's not time to do a lot of resource reading and say the context is um, in eviction. You can go to the eviction section, see what tools are available. So um, maybe you're in need of um, an eviction risk mapping tool, such as a data perimeters form. Again, you could click on it. You could see a very brief context that it's um, specifically for an eviction risk assessment. In the summary, you could see the kinds of categories that are in it. Uh, you could click on it and be taken directly to this template that can either be adapted or uh, used as is. Or um, if you're in need of an eviction tracking template, you can see um, that it's supposed to be used for tracking evictions after they take place. And if that's something that you need, um, again, you could click on it. You can also see that it could be used to complement the eviction monitoring matrix, which is provided right below. So that's more or less um, how, it's, how it can be used in practice. It's supposed to be kind of as easy and um, navigable as possible. And I will head back to the presentation now. <laughs> so status and next steps. Um, the toolkit has been disseminated along with a guidance sheet kind of briefly explaining, explaining its context and structure, um, as well as we made a four minute kind of um, training explainer video on how to use the toolkit. And this has been disseminated to the CCCM cluster, um, Focal Points, HLPOR Working Group, as well as uh, CCCM Country Office Focal Points with IOM. Um, and the next steps are to present the toolkit with more of an operational perspective from country offices who have received it, reviewed it, shared it with colleagues. Um, the team in IOM Peru has trained their CCCM team um, using the toolkit. So we'll be presenting this um, a more interactive presentation of the toolkit and operational perspectives next week um, at the Humanitarian Networks and Partnerships Week, um, April 26th at 2 p.m. Um, Central European time. And then we hope to coordinate more field tests to get more use of it, um, more feedback of actually using the toolkit in practice. And then in the next, I think early May, it will be published on the CCCM cl cluster website. So that is all I had. Um, I'm available for any questions, comments, feedback. Um, my email is here on the screen. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melina, um, for the presentation um, and for sharing the toolkit. Um, grateful if you can, you know, also share a link to the toolkit. And, and maybe it's good to share the link to the HNPW event which is taking place next week as well. Um, it's going to be a hybrid session. So for some of you who are in Geneva, it will be lovely to see you. Um, so next, um, we have Edward, who's joining us from the Site and Settlement Working Group in uh, Northeast Syria. Um, over to you, Edward. <laughs> 